Hello YouTube chess lovers and my friends, this is Gunjan here. Welcome to my 60th episode of Dirty Chess Tricks. In this episode, I am going to show you one of the modern tricky line against a Pierk defense from the white perspective. The opening arises after the following model e4, d6, d4, knight to f6, knight to c3 and now the trademark move g6 where black has a simple intention to play the move bishop to g7, castle and then hit back white center with some nice counterplay. Now against this white has tried various responses such as bishop to e3, knight to f3 and even the space gaining move f4. But I am going to suggest this very nasty move bishop to g5. So idea is very simple, if allowed then white will definitely take this knight and give black a double pawn. So obviously bishop to g7 is obvious choice. But after this, here comes the move which sets up the tricky platform and that is e5. <laughs> and I bet black players eyes will literally lit up as they can exchange on e5 and then trade the queen which obviously favors the black but the matter of fact is the reverse is true. Now before we look at the main line with d captures e5 the important point I want to highlight here that if your opponent continue with knight f to d7 then white can simply respond with f4 and with the space in the center and the bishop is outside the pawn chain this position always favors the white camp. So nope, why should black goes for this where he can easily capture on e5 and destroy whole white advantage in the opening stage. Well believe it or not but this is exactly what we want as after d captures e5 the tricky platform sets up right here. Now as we are attacking the knight, black has three major options but first let's look at the obvious one, queen captures d1, rook captures d1 and now the obvious move knight to g4 which to the naked eye looks like winning the pawn. And yes indeed that pawn is lost except black is losing the game outright after this move. White has this star move in this position, h3 and now by force we are getting the completely winning advantage. The first trap which many people fall into this and that is knight captures e5 which is outright blunder as after the white's next reply. Yup, you guessed it, knight to d5 and no matter how waver black wriggles, he is going to lose the exchange just within ninth move of the game. If the knight goes to a6 then we will obviously chop it off and if the king comes on the d file let's say king to d7 then we have this nice move knight to b6 which by force get the exchange and in fact the game. So this is one of the high profile trick exist if your opponent goes for knight to g4 line. The second alternative knight f to d7 doesn't change the scenario as this time around we will still continue with knight to d5 attacking on a two weak spot e7 as well as c7. Well, you might think, but what about bishop captures e5, defending on c7, but here comes the second trick on the table as after knight to f3, this bishop is a completely overload piece and he has to go to the only square, namely d6, in order to protect the c7 pawn. But now comes the second dazzling trick on the table, can you spot it? Yup, that is wonderful, bishop captures e7, bam! 
So that means this bishop can now no longer protect on c7. And after the following forcing sequence, bishop captures e7, knight captures c7 check, king to d8, and knight captures 8. Again, white emerge with an exchange up, and black's only hope to trap that knight in the corner with b6 completely fails due to the following order. Knight to e5, looking at juicy fork on f7. So in the database, a game between two 2000 plus rated opponent continue with rook to f8. But this is turned out as a big time disaster as after bishop to c4, white has multiple choices to save the knight and bishop to b7 completely fails due to the following tactic knight captures d7 knight captures d7 and now the winning shot bishop to b5 which confirms white advantage as after bishop to c8 and the move castle the easiest plan in the world is you can play the move rook to d3 double up the rook and show your exchange advantage to the black camp. So if your opponent tempted for the queen captures d1, then writing is straight away on the wall for the black camp. Now apart from queen captures d1, black has tried other options, but they are not good either. For example, if he continue here with knight to g4, which has the same intention to capture on e5, well, guess what? This is even worse than queen captures d1, as now white get chance to exchange the queen and then play this nice sequence, rook to d1 check. If bishop to d7, then e6 is a very strong reply and I have attached a sample line in the PGN. So king to e8, but that allow us to simple execute what we have seen earlier. Yup, h3, and after knight captures e5 and the move knight to d5, again and again, we are getting the exchange in a broad daylight. Last but not least, what happens if your opponent continue with knight f to d7? Well, this time around, white has this nice pawn lever, namely e6, attacking two spot. So black response is force, black has to capture on e6. And now you have the target, and the way to exploit is to play this simple continuation, queen to e2, attacking on e6. Chess engine suggests that black should play the move c5 and give up the e6, which doesn't help the black cause. So as a human perspective, let's see what happens if black hold on to his extra pawn. And I just like to show you one of my quickest win in this line, where my 2000 rated opponent continue with knight to f6, defending on e6, and also stopping me to castle on the queen side. But this makes things worse for the black camp as after rook to d1 attacking the queen. Black has to block with the bishop in order to protect the e6. Now I continue with knight to f3, so another threat, knight to e5, and then nabbing the bishop. So my opponent stopped this with knight to c6. But white keep creating the threat with knight to e4. So the idea is very simple, either knight to c4 or in some lines, white can exchange on f6. Well, my opponent figure out that that knight is too strong, so he chop it off. But that just increase my peace development with queen captures e4. And after castle and the move bishop to c4, believe it or not, black get a completely lost position. Well, my careless opponent played the last blunder of the game as he continued with queen to c8, getting out of the pin as well as defending on e6. But just one move and black resign. Do you spot it? Yup, 
the dazzling blow rook captures d7 boom <laughs> and black can't even touch this rook as after bishop captures e6 he will lose his queen that's it guys i hope you enjoy and learn this amazing tricky line against the peer defense remember once the black exchange on e5 no matter however he continue it is white who dictate the game from the opening stage thank you for watching this video feel free to like subscribe and comment and i will meet you in my next episode very soon bye and take care